Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is critical numbers. So I have a description on the board of how you know if you have a critical number or not. So first, in order for there to be a critical number at C, F of C has to be defined. So I can't have any vertical asymptotes or anything happening. It's got to be defined on the original function. So at, at C, it's got to be defined first of all. And we're going to say that the point x equals C is a critical number if either one of these two things occurs. First, the derivative at C is undefined or the derivative at C equals zero. So let's talk about the two situations. Let me first talk about number two. If you take the derivative, set it equal to zero and solve for C and you get a value for it, then what happens is at that point you have a horizontal tangent. So the place where that occurs at we're saying that's going to be the critical number. So wherever there is a horizontal tangent, for sure that's going to be a critical number. You could either have a hill going up like this or you could have a valley. So in fact, this idea right here is what we're going to be talking about later in this section when it asks us to find extrema. We can find extrema by taking the derivative set equal to zero. That's going to give us either a hill or a valley and, and it'll tell us what's happening around there if I have a local or an absolute max or min there. Now the other situation that's going to occur is if you take the first derivative and it's undefined. So here's a picture of something that happens where f of c is defined, but the derivative does not exist. If you have a cusp or a sharp point in the graph, that's a place where the derivative does not exist. So if you're wondering how that can possibly occur, then take a look at the next part of this video. I'm going to go through uh, finding the derivative using the limit process with absolute value. Absolute value has a point like this and you'll see why it's possible for the derivative to be undefined. Okay, for this problem we want to find the derivative of absolute value of x at 0, 0 using the limit process. Now it might have been a while since you've seen the limit process so I've put the formula up here just to remind us of how to do that. Okay, so the x value here is going to be a zero, so I'm going to start with this formula. I'll plug in a zero for the x's, and that'll look like this. It'll be f of zero plus h minus f of zero all over h. So now we have to evaluate each of those. Okay, so if I do f of zero plus h, essentially that's just saying we're going to do f of h. Okay, that means I'll just put an, an h in there in place of the x. Then we're going to do minus f of 0. f of 0 is the y value here. f of 0 is 0. And I have h down below. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of absolute value of h over h. That's what I get as a result. Now, let's take a look at this limit and think this through what it could be. I'm going to be, of course I can't put zero in here because I'm dividing by zero, but if I wanted to find this limit, what I would do is I want to try to find the limit from the left hand side and the right hand side. So if I approach this from the left, that means I'm going to be putting in a number that is just slightly less than zero. If it's less than zero, that means it must be a negative number. So if I put, it doesn't really matter what the number is, but if I put a negative number in the top, absolute value is always going to make it positive but the bottom number is going to be negative because I'm putting in a negative value for h. Now if I check the limit as h approaches 0 from the right hand side, that means I'm putting in a number that's slightly larger than 0. That would be a positive number. This is always positive and then that means this bottom one will be positive so the whole thing is positive. So the result is if I approach 0 from the left I get a negative number. If I approach 0 from the right I get a positive number. Well then that means that I'm approaching two different y values as I approach zero, which means that that limit is not going to exist. So if the limit doesn't exist, that means that the derivative at zero, zero also does not exist. So this is a case where it's defined at zero, so f of zero, we did that here and we got zero. However, the derivative f primed of zero that would not exist.